Hey gamers, welcome back to my fifth weekly vlog, my very original sounding board gaming channel, Jason Talks About Games. Let me open things up with what I found the most interesting gaming news of the week, and that has to go to the rule change for Dice Masters. After a couple of years of the game being out, they finally ruled that the player going first has a statistical advantage. So the new rule is that I think the first player starts with two dice or something like that. The reason I find this rule interesting is because it essentially invalidates every single second place finisher in a tournament in the history of Dice Masters. Okay, moving on to games I have played this week. It was a huge week for gaming for me. I had a couple of gaming nights and my son and I are always playing games together. So, Max vs. Minions, still a wonderful game. I slowed down on it because I was trying to catch up to where my son and I was with my wife Jess, but I think uh, because she's usually working nights when I'm off and she's been busy lately, I think my son and I are just going to start powering through this game and then we can play again with Jess uh, when she starts getting more time. A Road to Legend, the app for Descent that allows you to play the one versus many campaign style game cooperatively. You can check out my review for it on the Dice Tower, but it essentially went from Descent collecting dust because I don't have a regular Descent gaming group to being able to go adventuring with my son and our own story. It's fun to succeed together. It's fun to go spend our gold at the shop in town. What Fantasy Flight is doing with the apps, Mansions of Madness and Descent, and what is coming for Imperial Assault is nothing but awesome. It just gives us more variability with the games we already enjoy. Shotten Totten played this one. Great little game. I played it with Hayden a few times. And with Jess loving Lost Cities, I think she's going to love this one. So I'm looking forward to playing it with Jess. We had some friends over one night and we played a game of Royals. We played a four player game and I really like this game. This game essentially kills Ticket for Ride for me. It's got the same set collection. Um, feel that Ticket the Ride has, I just think this one's more fun, it flows more, I like the theme, I like assassinating other people's nobles. Really simple, you can teach it in five minutes. That's Royals. Played uh, Survive Space Attack as well, it's a good family game. I actually like the downfall of Pompeii a bit better, it's got, instead of your spaceship breaking apart, it's got lava from the volcano hitting the town. Um, but it's a fine game and Jess just loves it so it was good. I mean it's a hit with people uh, we've played it with and uh, um, a couple people went out and bought this game after playing it so survive space attack. Got to play Jamaica with six players. It's a, it's a great family classic game. Very light. However when I played with six people, it really occurred to me that it is very low on skill in decision making. For example, if someone rolls two sixes off the hop and they've got their move forward twice card, boom, they're up 12. Nobody else in the game might get that same opportunity if no one else had that double move forward card. That being said, it's just a great fun game. It's fun shooting your cannonballs at each other and pillaging the other ships, giving them cursed treasure. It's just a blast. In-depth strategy or not. I played Far Space Foundry. Now this game, to be honest, I did not like this game. It, uh, it's, it's a game where you placing tokens based on a pilot card you play on this little space station and 
uh, you bring in an item into your hold on the space station. And then you're trying to fly item, like, you know, you, the resources that you bring in, you essentially want to convert them into other goods that are worth more points at the end of the game. And then the game goes into phase B, where you are bringing goods in. I just couldn't find anything to like about this game. So I wanted to find out what there is to like about this game. So I got on and started reading some other reviews and um, apparently it can be quite the in-depth uh, brain burning strategy game. It just takes a few plays to get there and yeah, first game it was just, it just seemed like, okay, well, I'll just do this. I'll just bring a token in here. The game didn't grab me enough to want to play it more times and get to know it. So I can appreciate it as one of those games that you you just have to play it a bunch to understand how it's really supposed to get played. And I'm fine with that, but I still like to be grabbed about something with the game from the beginning. And this didn't offer that to me. I felt like... If you're, we played a three-player game, and I felt like if you didn't bring enough goods into the, the B phase of the game, then you just didn't have a chance anyway. It almost seemed like half of the game was pointless. But that's... You know what? Let me know what you guys think, Farspace Foundry. Tell me what I'm missing. Hitsy Road was another one that hit the table again. And the more I play this game, the more I like it. I mean, this this game is got a really cool bidding system with the Yahtzee style, not sorry, not Yahtzee style, dice chucking zombie combat. You're supposed to go through this deck of cards, uh, which represents locations that you have to grab every round. You're trying to bid your resources, bullets, gasoline, and adrenaline, to see who gets the pick of the location. Usually it's just a combination of bad cards that has you fight a certain amount of zombies, but if there's like a really bad card that's going to make you fight like 12 zombies, you might bid a whole bunch of your resources to pick something else. You know, it's the path of least evil. There's three stages of cards, one, two, and three. If you can get through the third deck, you make it to LA and then you count up all your points to win. The resources is so tight in this game because not only do you need them for getting your pick, you uh, you can use your bullets to get first shot at zombies where you're not risking dying. You can use adrenaline to stop guys from dying and get bonus kills. And you can use gasoline to run away from fights. The balance between keeping the things you want and maybe not taking your pick to spending these to get your pick is great and we still have not made it to LA it's really just a matter of who can survive the longest it plays in about half an hour it's great with two three and four players hit zero I just I really like it in fact I like it so much that I want to go and try via nebula another Martin Wallace lightish game that came out this year just because of uh, how much I like this one I played Oceanos. It's a card drafting game by the card drafting master, Antoine Bauza, the designer of Seven Wonders and co-designer of Seven Wonders Duel. Um, Ghost Stories, I've never played that. I don't think it's a card drafting game, but this is uh, a new spin on the card drafting. You're, you're, uh, you're drafting cards and, and playing them in front of you. There's five drafting rounds over three stages of the game. And you've got your submarine. So upgrading your submarine is, uh, you know, part of the drafting. You've got, like, different sea animals on things. So you're trying to, at the end of each round, have uh, the most different kinds of animals. And depending on how much you've upgraded your submarine is how many animals you can hold. Having a full orthogonal... Uh, connected line of coral at the end is worth points so you're trying to collect animals get a big line of coral 
Um, there's treasure chests on the card, so you can drop your diver down, and depending on how much you've upgraded your submarine is, is how many divers you can have. They stay on there until the end of the game, and they let you draw from this bag of points at the end for every treasure chest that your diver passes on the way up. It took, uh, it took two plays to really get into the flow of it, but this is a game that I am really liking. I've only played it with Hayden, my seven-year-old son. I can't wait to play this with higher player counts. I, I really like how this game comes together. It's by Yellow, and the production is great on it. Clank, deck building game. This game, I again, just played with Hayden, the one game, but it's really cool. It already kills trains for me, another deck builder with a board. I can't wait to show this to Jess because she loves Star Realms and deck builders like that. She really loves trains, so I think she's going to fall in love with this game. It's your typical deck builder. It does nothing new for the genre, but you're going through a dungeon and, you know, it's, you know, Star Realms essentially where you're going to drop all five of your cards, do what you say. The symbols will like, move you in the dungeon. It'll uh, fight monsters in the, the row of cards you get. It can buy new weapons and companions and stuff like that to help you go through the dungeon. You're trying to work your way down, grab a relic and get your way out by the end. Soon someone leaves the dungeon or dies, a five round timer essentially starts. And to mix things up, sometimes a dragon attacks you and th you know what? The hit point system with this game and the dragon is a, a unique mechanic for the deck builder. So it does have that. I really like Clank. I got to play a six player game of Mysterium. I've played it with uh, three before. I've always been the ghost. I got to be one of the investigators and it was a blast. We all won as a team. Really cool, unique game. Relic Runners. I wanted to get a little bit more familiar with this game. I played it the one time. Brought this to the table last night and this is another game where First play, it's like, meh, I don't, I don't see what, what's so great about this game. Second play, you're like, oh, cool, I get it. So uh, this is, this I think was underrated from Days of Wonder. The, the puzzling and moving around the jungle is very cool. This week, I'm hoping to play a proper game of Codex. If I've got one game that, upon first play, I just love and want to get to know. It's Codex, so I'm hoping to get this played with Jess. And as soon as I'm done shooting this video, Hayden and I are probably going to play Mechs vs. Minions. I've got 50 of those little minions painted now, which just brings the game to life all the more. In fact, I highly recommend if you're playing this game, check out the Riot Radio Play, the Radio Play option on the Riot website for this game. It just brings a whole narrative story to the game. You play a segment between each mission and as you start accomplish accomplishing goals in each mission you play the little radio play and you hear all the banter of the characters and stuff like that. It's great if you're playing with kids they're gonna be so excited to get to the next part of the mission to uh, find out what happens in the next part of the story. And I've got a question of the week. Maybe this is something I'm going to make a regular thing but my question of the week is how many times do you play a game before you feel like you've got your money's worth? For me, I like to if I play a game 10 times, then I feel I got the money's worth and I don't feel as much pressure to, you know, get it out and get it played. Tell me what you think. Do you have to play bigger games less because they take longer? Thanks for watching for everyone that has subscribed to my channel. Thanks very much. It encourages me to keep doing these. For those of you that enjoy this and you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Always interested in hearing what you have to think, comments, good or bad. Hit me up on Twitter or Instagram in the links down below. Until next week, everyone.